Happy New Year, everybody. Welcome to the Arlington Housing Authority um, 20, January 20th, 2021 regular meeting. Seven o'clock. We started at 7.04. Okay. <clears throat> call to order 7.04. Roll call. Um, Brian? Yeah. Gar? Gar's here. Rella? Here. Joanne? Here. And Nick is here. So we'll get started with the appointments. We'll start with local tenant organizations. Um, please use the chat. If you guys understand the chat, let me know if you want to speak. Uh, send me a chat or raise your hand. Pam, Pam House, the president of Winslow Towers. Go ahead, Pam. Okay, I really have nothing. First of all, I would wish to thank on the behalf of most of the tenants of Winslow Towers for the dinners that were provided by for Christmas by the board of commissioners. They were delicious. Anytime you want to do it again, more than welcome to chip in. And <laughs> with your permission, Nick, I have a statement I'd like to read. Uh, is that okay, John Greco? It should be okay, right? Oh. Yep, go ahead. As a person that has been involved with the Allington Housing Authority for her whole life, in the past three meetings, I have witnessed an outrage of behavior. To use language that was used is, in the, the name calling, in my opinion, unacceptable. I also feel that people, including some members of the board, do not understand what a housing authority is for and why it was established. In order to be effective, a compassion for these less fortunate is crucial. If the Arlington Housing Authority were ever disbanded, it would cause major problems for the people that live here. We cannot afford the current rents that are being charged, and many would have either end up on the street or die for a lack of a place to live. I ask the Arlington Housing Authority and the Town of Arlington to please be aware of what some of you are trying to do to the elderly, handicapped, and families that live in this great town and learn about the history of the Arlington Housing Authority. In closing, I wish to thank John Griffin, who has done an exemplary job as executive director. His staff work tirelessly in handling problems that arise with tenants and are trying to fill empty apartments. The, ma the maintenance staff is always making sure that the apartments are safe and in working condition. I also wish to thank the Board of Commissioners Bob, John, Bob, and all the staff for everything they do for the Arlington Housing Authority. Thank you very much, Nick. Thanks, Pam. Thank you, Pam. <clears throat> Appreciate it. Um, anybody else from a tenant association like to speak? Um, yeah, um, Marianne. Marianne, how are you? Go ahead. Hi, um, from the Hauser Building. Um, mm -hmm. And I would just like to thank Pam for what she said. I don't know you, Pam. This was not a coordinated event, um, but I am thrilled with what you said. So I just want to echo everything. Thank you very much. Thank you, Pam. <clears throat> Thank you. Anybody else? Any Thank other you. tenant associations? Patrick Levy. Any other tenant associations? Pat Dunleavy. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Sorry, I didn't. Sorry. Sorry. Um, I, I also want to thank my. I personally want to thank um, the authority for the dinners. Uh, some people really enjoyed them. And um, there is one thing I would like to ask one of your members. I would like to ask Joanne, uh, as the current president of the association because of COVID, I understand that you've been meeting with some of the tenants. And I think as a courtesy, it would have been nice if you got in touch with me. Uh, my phone number, if you'd like to take it down is 781. 258-5128. And my email is Ben Gabby, B E N G A B Y, as in Ben and Gabby Frankie, at Comcast.net. And I really would appreciate it if you would get in touch with me. Okay. Nick? Okay. Anything Nine. else? Hold on. Hold on. Anything else? You good? Yeah. Um, no, okay. I'm all set. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Pat. Any other, anybody else from the tenant association? Pam, you wanted to say something? Go ahead. Nick, yes. 
for those that don't realize why I said involved with my whole life, my father was the first executive director of the Arlington Housing Authority from 1949 to 1975 when he passed away from cancer. The housing building is currently named after him. So I have known about the housing authority and been involved. I was at every opening of every elderly building in this town. So I know what's going on. And I think a lot of what's going on with the housing authority, with the tenants, not the board, or the staff, or maintenance is outrageous. Thank you, Pam. Okay, thank you. Uh, anybody else from a tenant association? Uh, Nick. Go ahead, Joanne. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I just want a correction. I've I've never met with any group at the housing Hauser building. Um, the closest I came is once I got elected, some woman emailed me that she wanted to give me a tour around buildings. It took mm -hmm. about six months to arrange it, and she very nicely. I it's a beautiful, beautiful site. I went on this tour, but I didn't meet with any group. I didn't talk with any group. Um, that's all. Okay, thank you. That, that was from Cusack, though. Not Hauser. Oh, I thought she said Cusack. No, yeah, a, no. Oh, they, yes, they invited me to meet with them on the terrace. Only a couple of people could come. Um, was it in June or July to have tea? And we did for 15 or 20 minutes, and they told me about the physical plan of the building. That's all. Um, it was, I know Brian has met with a group there, but I have not met with a group there other than the three or four people who came to the tea on the terrace. Okay, thanks, Joanne. Fiorella, you want to say something? You're on mute, by the way. Yeah. Um, could I just ask on uh, the maintenance being outrageous? I just wanted some more details for the person that mentioned that. Any specific complaints? I don't know who um, asked. That. It was me, for real, Pam Hauser. Um, Pam back in November, we we had a meeting that the language is utterly disgraceful for a public meeting. It was totally totally unacceptable the name calling the swear words the gestures it was unbelievable and it should never ever have happened these people should have a little more common sense to know what is proper for the maintenance you didn't mean like the people that actually you know do the maintenance around the buildings you meant more about the board it was the people the Tenants no, from monotony man. Like, no, it wasn't. There was a man that was calling us all names, ma'am. Hold on, well, hold on. Uh, hold, on. Of hold, on. The... hold on, we're not gonna go there. Hold on. Let's just stop for a minute. Okay. Okay. Thank I'll you. be quiet, Nick. Don't, don't thank, accuse thank us you. people, quote us people for doing anything but defending ourselves, Pam. Hold on, hold on. Okay. I'm not gonna go do I'm not doing this again unless you talk to I'm not doing old. anything but defending myself, Nick. It's okay. You 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 weren't asked I'm to speak. And you, my voice. You I will. I I'm will. Just don't you, being told you, will, you, will, you, you know, you, you need to be acknowledged. Then you can speak. Okay, please. Okay. Thank yes. you, everybody. That that goes to everybody. If you'd like to speak, I I did. I Fiorella, you were last. Are you okay? Are you done? I am. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Who is RC? That would be me. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Thank you. Um. So I wanted, I wanted just to, I'm curious if there was any, I know when we talked last, I'm, I'm concerned, uh, the longer I've been at this house, this um, townhouse, I guess you call it, from, I had a move from 96 to 76, the windows here are uh, not in good shape. So there's, there's condensation on the inside of the panes. Um, my heat, I have a picture if you want to see it, but my thermostat was at, 72 and my heat was at 51 the other night um my bill is closed 168 dollars so so i know you did the windows in 2008 but that's not an answer like i think there should be an en energy audit or something needs just to be checked into because i'm not the only one with this problem we all a lot of us do and because we're low income 
that's a big deal. I mean, the money that we spend. So I like, I feel like this is the only platform we have. Um, a month goes by. I mean, I haven't, I don't feel like I can bring this to maintenance because they tell us nothing. The, the windows are the way they are. That's what I've gotten from them. So um, what can we do about getting somebody to take a look at the people? And I'm happy to go around and ask whose windows need um, or their people are having problems, but, um, so yeah, that, that's what I wanted to ask and say. Thank you, Rachel. Uh, John, anything? Yeah, no, I, I just want to call them. They should just call, call that, uh, answer the, um, work order system for maintenance. Uh, if there's something they can do about the windows, they'll do it. If there's not, then there's really nothing. But I did. Do. I mean, that's I have, and I, the answer and response I've gotten is that's just, they're old and that's just the way the windows are my daughter's window was off the track for about a, a at least the weekend and with the wind it was banging and flapping in on her so they're not something i mean they're corroded i have i mean i don't want to have to go around to each window but i'm happy i have pictures um so the screens a lot of them don't have tabs so when you try to move them up they fall out and break so that's all i'm not asking i mean i'm not being accusatory i'm just asking you guys to do something about it or take a look okay. so happy, happy, to, happy to take a look at it happy to take, take a look, look. rachel we'll take a look. okay if, if we could get money to, to put all the windows in which we in 2008 when we did the kitchen and bath and uh, electrical and plumbing when we did all that over uh there was it was about 13 million dollars that we put right into that's that. what you said can you tell me when you're gonna look at it and what how and like when should i expect you guys to check in and let me know because i would rather not a whole month go by before you know, I, find no, if you, call, you, you have to call a work order into the maintenance okay department, but I, they, I have so will you, is this bypass maintenance or do i have to go through that system again hey, you have John. to go through that system again John, Nick. go ahead go ahead brian uh, John, why why can't we just get the plastic? Uh, I don't want plastic on my windows. I would like to have the opportunity to not have my window. Yeah. That's not a solution for a lot of us. My well, my, son, my son's special needs. I can't put plastic on the window. Okay, let me finish for a minute. Um, you can put the plastic on the outside as well. So, I mean, if, if it's a matter of sealing the window for the winter to get by until you place windows in the future, uh, there's, you know, there's one solution. If that was John, we should have a half down there and already checked for that. John, I'll, I'll work with you, John. Rachel, we'll get you an answer, all right? I'll call you. How, in the next when would that be? I'm just asking, call, when would that be? That's all. Can you, you, can you give me an idea? I will call you in the next couple of days by the weekend. Thank you, Nick. Rachel. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Nick. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I just heard. I had no, a hold on. We're not, go ahead, Joanne. Yeah. Um, I'm just wondering, uh, for John Griffin, would this be a, a project that would be allowable in another year? You have to wait for the next cycle of grants or the Community Preservation Act, the repair of windows of another year? Well, it would be if they were leaking uh, or causing damage to the inside of the property. It can't be oh. for general modernization. Um, it has to be for uh, the protection and preservation. And that's it if you use in community development, uh, excuse me, CPA money. If you use it, mm -hmm. uh, you could apply for uh, CDBG funding also. But uh, as you know, I think if you take a look at the history of our CDBG request over the past 30 years that I've been here, um, you'll see what we request and in, in, in the amount of money that we don't receive. So, um, you know, we can use put formula funding to it, uh, but that's still probably still a few years down the line from that. As far as getting windows, it's not it's not going to be a uh, quick solution. We looked at it before. If the city all of a sudden came up with another uh, few million dollars, we could do it. Um, but as far as the, the the heating systems going and things like that, we put in uh, two years ago. We put in all new heating and hot water systems. Uh, at over two and a half million dollars, no cost to the residents, and there's actually no cost to us. It was uh, through the Lean Energy Grant uh, mm -hmm. for low-income housing. So, um, 
we've updated pretty much everything in that property except the foundations uh, and and the windows. Uh, the roofs are new. They were put on in 2008 also. Um, but it, it's a, a few million dollars and it's going to take uh, a lot of pressure and uh, the Department of Housing and Community Development hasn't prioritized windows uh, at this time. So, but I mean, we, I think we John, what, yeah, what, we, plan. Yeah, what we need to do, John, is take a look at it. And if there's a short term fix that we can do, we should probably take a look at it like Brian's recommendation or suggestion. I mean, that's yep. short term stuff that we can do. Um, one you know, major rent, I mean, let's say that, Brian. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, well, one other thing we could do is um, you know, you see the thin plexiglass at the restaurants and stuff. So right. you could have you could put that on the exterior of the window, you know, yeah. clock it to get, I mean, just to get through the winter. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Some, some quick cheap fixes we can do. Yeah. The major but, major renovations the other, need big funding. So go ahead. Yeah, the ultimate goal would be to replace them, but absolutely. All right. Go, go ahead, Fiero. Go ahead. Fear, go ahead. You're I was just wondering the plexiglass. What would that entail for the summer, though? Would it have to be removed? Can it be removed by the yes. tenant themselves? Yes. Yep. Yeah, because I, I know that the sustainability and energy program was initiated in 2008. So I know that we got new energy and water conservation um, things uh, to save on that. But again, we can we can apply the money to that. But where the windows are letting most of the heat escape, then we have yeah, another right. problem. We're not really saving anything, you know, right. due to that fact. What, happen, what well, happens, uh, Fiorella, is they come out of different pockets, the, uh, the money that they use for um, the heating systems and hot water systems come from uh, the energy companies. Okay. Um, and, and I'm just saying it is, it is concerning to have such a high bill for both energy and water due to the fact that we don't have the means okay. to save on it. Yeah. Well, you, well, you don't pay water. We pay the water. Well, the heating and electricity wise, you know, for example, each lighting and the house has three bulbs in it and the living room has no lighting i just feel like that's something that can easily be updated to save money um just little things like that the windows i have i will say windows, we, have called maintenance. we have called maintenance to fix certain things with the windows with cracks on the floor and we are told that that's just how it is and i just don't think that that's a an okay answer to what's going on I'll, I'll get in contact with you too. We'll, we'll, we'll figure it out, right? It's going to be a short term, medium term. So we can figure some grant out or something. The, I mean, it's all about sustainability nowadays. So I, I sure hope that we yeah. can figure something out. Okay, cool. Um, that was the tenant. Any other tenant associations? I I also want. Hold on, to hold on, hold on, Marion. You're not on. We're still, in, we're still on the tenant association. So, um, okay, no other tenant associations. Um, can we, we can we go to the public, general public? Uh, there's a couple people. Hold on, hold on. There's a couple people that chatted to me. Um, Ellen Lee. Ellen Lee. Yes. Hi. Yes. Can thank you, just, you. Hi. I'm you in just, Cusack. Just, um, just state your name and where you live, please. Or whatever. Yes, this is Ellen, and I'm in Cusack Terrace. Oh, hey. Oh, sorry, Ellen. I didn't recognize you. Okay. Go ahead. I don't think you can see me. And we don't see right, you. Um, right, right, okay. Um, yes, thank you. I, I wanted to just follow up on a couple of things. Um, one was, I know uh, there has been discussion previously about um, automatic door openers to enhance accessibility that um, currently is, I know that there's been discussion amongst, you know, various buildings and putting in uh, things, but specific to QSAC, automatic doors in the communal rooms, bathrooms, making sure that those are accessible. I was just curious what the timeline is for that, when that might be happening. The the whole um, the projects for all all the buildings is you got the handicap accessibility on the bathrooms. Um, probably will have will probably start or go out to bid probably in the next month or so. Um, the the handicap door openers on the bathrooms uh, can be done before that. So probably within the next month or so, we could do the uh, the door openers uh, because that, that's pretty much the extent of what the handicap accessibility is gonna be over at QZAC. 
um, the oh, there's also communal community. Um, there's like the TV room is also a commu community room that I can't get into, for example, or other people that are in wheelchairs, or even if you were in a walker, it would, it would be difficult to get into. So, um, it really prohibits. I mean, obviously, things are different now, but um, you know, it's been this way for as long as I've lived here, and so it would be important um, to make those accessible for every, it, because they're meant for everyone, including people in wheelchairs and walkers, so to have the access, um, that would be important. It, you know, the community room does have one, which is great. Um, that was an improvement, and um, the other room does need, and in addition to the bathroom as well. So I just want to make sure that when you're ordering these and setting it up, that that does get included, please. Yeah. Well, could you can you you can enter the library through the community room. Is that correct? Or I no, I believe so. Um, but yeah, that's handicap uh, accessible doors are not a problem. Okay. Anything else, Ellen? Yes. Um, so I've, I've been uh, advocating for a while with federal, state, and local regarding the vaccine and trying to um, have prioritization for uh, our buildings. And I'm um, you know, very glad that last week there was a prioritization so that folks in, in, um, in buildings such as ours are now on the first tier of phase two. And I know there's been delays in distribution, et cetera. Um, but I, I wanted to know if there has been communication and or a plan in terms of John, whether there John, would be we, a vaccine. Yeah, Ellen, I think John, example, John is not to the building similar to maybe like a flu clinic that we've had in the past, wondering what, what, um, what strategies or plans are in place so that as soon as the vaccines are available, you already have a plan in place so that you get the vaccines. Um, and and will that include all the all of the residents in in, in buildings? Ellen, yeah, John, senior, um, John, Ellen, disabled housing. John, go ahead. When you talk to Christine, when you're on right is the uh, go ahead, Department of Health. Yeah, yeah. No, I've been in constant communication with Christine Bongiorno from the Department of uh, Public Health, and uh, my latest conversation was today. Uh, they the, the game plan is they're going to be doing uh, the vaccines the same way they did the flu clinics. They're going to go door to door uh, in each one of the buildings, um, and and they're, all, they're also at the same time uh, they're still going to be uh, they have extra funding that they receive. They have some leftover money. They still plan on doing more testing in our elderly buildings in that same manner, where they would uh, call up. Um, and, and come to your apartment and uh, administering uh, administer the test in your in your unit or at your door your unit. Uh, so that that is the game plan. As as far as you know, we were moved to um, tier tier one in phase two, which was a, a great thing. I, I think uh, you know, I know I've had conversations with Sean Gobbley, and I know uh, Cindy Friedman is on the committee that actually I think decides. Uh, makes those decisions. So I know I know they've been uh, working on it also, but the Department of uh, the Arlington Board of Health is just waiting for the uh, State Department of uh, Public Health um, to let them know when they're going to get the vaccine and when they start phase two. Uh, that'll be up to the state when they start phase two. But when they do start phase two, we're going to be in the very first group. And uh, Christine's uh, has already told me that uh, she has the organization to go, come to our apartment, come to each building and go door to door. So that will be the game plan. Great. Okay, and, and great. As, as soon as I know more information, I'll let people know also. Okay, okay yeah, that'll be important to plan for. And do um, you know who, who will actually be coming door to door? Will it be a nurse or a pharmacy person, a pharmacist? Do you know? Right. Don't know. I, I don't know that. Christine would have those answers. Yeah. Come on, idea. Okay, I think that, that's just important to uh, to have somebody available just in case anybody had an allergic reaction or anything like that, you know, so just um, in terms of planning for that. Yeah. Yeah. The fuck are you? I'm sorry? Anything, anything else, Ellen? Ellen? Thank you. Um, well, I, 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 just, I just wanted to bring up one quick issue that was talked about um, last time and 
and it'll probably be the rest of the board and, and there won't be public input. But I, I, I just wanted to reiterate in terms of the idea about the liaison, I think yeah. um, something that I know that a lot of the tenants have talked about is having, you know, meetings um, when we can convene in person, but be able to meet with all of the different board members so that there isn't a, a one liaison for a building, but rather we get to know all of you, which would be great. And then you get to know us and you get to know what the buildings are like and what the needs are, it's, it, you know, so that it, um, because you're all going to be voting on things and, and you'll have a vested interest in, in all of the buildings. So I just wanted to really emphasize that. Um, yeah, uh, Ellen, uh, I've got an update. I, we didn't get it officially on the agenda for this meeting, but uh, when we get to new business, uh, okay. some other ideas that's going to fit into exactly what you're talking about. So, um, great. Thanks. Okay. okay. All so, right. Who here. is, um, Thank you very who, much. Who is ME? Me. I have, I have condensation inside my windows as well. I'm in the manor. And someone mentioned Mass Saves, which is a great idea. I don't know who that, I don't know who ME is. Okay. Um. Anybody? Lisa Hersey or something? That's me. Who's that? Uh, that's me. My name's Lisa. I'm okay. I'm new at the manor. I've only okay. lived here in September. Okay, Lisa. That's you. Okay. Good. Yep. Yeah, it's something to say. I was just saying that I had condensation in my window as my window as well. And I okay. was wondering if mass saves was something that possibly could help with maybe some of the window issues. I don't know if that's something they can do for public housing or not, but I know for me, I keep my heat at 68, but yeah. literally when my heat kicks on and I'm sitting by the window, you can feel the heat and the cold air fighting each other yeah. as it's going out the windows. Oh. So I mean I plan on putting up plastic. I know it's not ideal for everybody, but I wasn't sure if mass save was something that you know could be an option to possibly helping some of the people down here. Great idea. It's a great idea. We'll check into that piece. Okay. Yeah, I, I can answer okay. that one. Go ahead, John. I just um, we have worked with mass save. In fact, uh, even since 2008, when we did the renovation, they came through and did uh, all the exterior lighting over, put in uh, the LED lights on the exterior of the buildings at Menominee Manor. Uh, they willing to go through the buildings again. They're actually coming into all our elderly buildings at this time to put all new light fixtures again in all our hallways and, and in our units uh, in the elderly buildings. So uh, they are. We, we plan on uh, in working with DHCD. Uh, we were the pi a pilot on the sustainability program. Uh, if you remember, I don't know if you hear that in Furiella a few months back. Uh, we talked about it and. Uh, anything we do now down there is going to have to have a sustainability component to it, and um, you know they're going to need energy audits on all our buildings anyway. So that's probably going to be done probably in the next within the next six months. We should have all energy energy audits completed uh, on on all Manani Manor and uh, all the elderly buildings also. Great, that's a great suggestion, Lisa. Thanks. Anything else? Thank you. Thank you, um, Marion. Yeah, I just wanted to say that um, a lot of these window issues I've been bringing up at board meetings on behalf of Menominee Manor when I was, you know, with the tenant association there since about 2000. Um, I, because I and the tenants were always having trouble with condensation between the windows and malfun malfunctioning windows and we were just always told that there wasn't money for it or that maintenance would take care of it or whatever but nothing ever got done mary you said since, it was, you said since 2000 been, mary you said since 2000 we upgraded the windows 2008 so, we did, no, no, we did, nothing we was done with the windows in 2008. Question. Nothing was done, John, in 2008 with the windows. No, no, we tried. We tried to get the windows in, uh, and uh, they didn't fund the windows, unfortunately. Um, you just said 13 million dollars went into the windows in 2008. No, no, no. I didn't say that. 
I said $13 million went into the kitchens, bathrooms, electrical, plumbing, and roofs. And insulation. Nothing has been done with the windows okay, since we'll take the 1980s. Uh, okay, we'll take a look. So, Nick, can I go offer ahead, something? Right. Yeah, go ahead, Brian. Uh, can I recommend we mm -hmm. immediately do a survey of all those units down there to determine and prioritize who's Whose unit first? It sounds like it's a systemic problem. We can either put the plexiglass on the outside or the plastic on the inside or something. There's a fix to this. A, you know, we can do a quick fix. So, yep. um, so perhaps we you know, do that immediately. Uh, yeah, I'll work with John and the maintenance crew. I'll, yeah, we'll, we'll figure out something to get down there and figure out how to do an audit. Um, Rachel, you're around. Fiorelli, you're around over the next couple of days. Yes. Okay. Thank you. All right, Fiorella, I'll call you in the next Hello. days. Right. <laughs> cool. Uh, Mary, you all set? Uh, Marianne, Kathy Spencer would like to comment. Kathy? Hey, John. Um, the redetermination for uh, rent. I guess I was starting on March 1st. We we're just going to security to go by that I increase but a lot of the people want to have redetermination so they were told that to call in and make an appointment to have that done whoever wants a full redetermination is that correct that's correct yep and for this year here we're on the biannual so the only the only increases will be for the people who have social security if there's a social security increase uh the, anyone at any, any time if they want uh, some people will do it because they have uh special medical deductions that they want to add into this year's um and they can request a a rent to a, a full rent determination at any time so yes they, they can call up and get a full uh they have to provide all the, the paperwork the bank statements and things like that but yeah they can get that done also most times people don't want to redetermine the events, so. I, I'd rather go through security myself, so. But um, the other thing was about the shots. I know that we got put on, the governor put us on the um, priority listing. And now I'm seeing on TV with all of these governors getting ticked off that Trump didn't send them what they were supposed to send them, and there was no reserve. Now, California just shot. Why are we talking about this? Who is, uh, who is PD? Hold on, hold on a minute, Kat. Who is PD? Who is PD, please? John, can you mute PD? That's Pat Dunlovey. Uh, Nick. What? Pat, can you? Okay. I don't know. If something's coming out of your, your um, your room or right. yeah. Okay, let me check. Let me check. You just mute yourself, Pat. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Someone else. Uh, okay, go ahead. Sorry. So I. I Expecting that people here want to know when it's going to happen. At first, we figured maybe the end of February, beginning of March. But now, with all the problems that are coming up with Moderna's shot, it may not come to that. Do you know what I mean? We're on the priority list, but we might be on there for four months. Well, it's, it's, it's not our call, though. <laughs> I mean, that, that's the state, and that's Governor Baker, man. So we got to you know, go. Well, we can't do anything. There aren't, you know, there aren't vaccines around. So, um, and I want to say, our maintenance guys, since we've had this pandemic, these guys work their fingers off for us. And I just want to say that these guys that we have here are unbelievable, and everyone is worth every penny. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah I appreciate that. And, uh, I do want to let you know uh, that we do have, uh, we did have a maintenance gentleman, one of our maintenance workers, 
test positive yesterday and we sent two others home and and to be tested so that's uh three maintenance guys that are out right now uh, where was one. he which buildings where he was at the housing building the monotony manor oh, oh okay Houser. thank you yeah. um, okay um kathy you all set okay uh rachel you said you had something else to ask and we Rachel? Yeah, I just wanted to follow up on the, I put it in there, but the, with the mice and the, and, or the rodents and the, the roaches, I know it's winter, but they're still here. And I was just following up if there's maintenance happening or like follow up routine maintenance, you know, changing up the bait. Yep, there's, there's actually, we signed in a contract with uh, Terminex company and they, they were actually starting, uh, that we're going to do the whole development. We're starting, I believe. They're gonna, they're gonna start on building two and they're gonna uh well they're gonna actually start i think building 16 but then they're gonna start at building two and then go two uh three four right through all our buildings we're gonna have uh every unit uh treated uh for oh good us. okay great thanks so, John. all right and i just had one last thing um so the lights that are outside is there any way to turn them so they're not facing our windows at night so the one in front of uh, 96 on gardner where we live first off it goes on and off it's really dangerous that's been brought up before and it and i've called eversource they told me it's not them gave me a number to the town and so it's i can't figure out who is supposed to change the bulb a and they're shining right in so it goes on for three minutes and then i've counted and then it stops for two um and it's like hiccups, you wait for it, but it's shining through into our our windows. And I notice as I walk around, I know it's a safety thing, but maybe tilt them down a little bit more towards the ground and not towards shining at the buildings. Are you, are you talking the, the pole lights? Or the yeah, so I've called, like I said, I've called Eversource and then they said it was um, Arlington and then they sent me to a different um, company that has control, I, I just haven't been able I, I have called it in, not for a while, but I think so, uh, some, we've talked, um, I think one of the first meetings, one of my neighbors had brought it up, that it was out and then it would go back on. So I wasn't sure if anything, it's, it, nothing's been done about it. So I was hoping that you guys could look into that too. If you could tell, if you could tell Janet which light it is, uh, that would be fine that we can call the uh, company and get them out there to take a look at it. Okay, and same with maybe pointing it down because it's really hard. I know we have shades, but it, it shines through. It, it's hard. Okay. Project manager, that's why she's down. Yeah. That's not going to cheat. Right. Hey, 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 oh, oh. Whoever that is, whoever's speaking, needs to mute themselves or be a little more respectful and watch. A lot more language. respectful. A yeah. lot more and, respectful. And watch your language. I don't know who that is, but it, it's caller four. Whoever caller four. 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 I don't know, know, but it's caller four. Thank you. Um, anybody else? We're good to go. Thanks. Um, project Nick, update, John. Nick, listen, I, listen, hold it, hold it, hold it. I don't like to interrupt like this, but I signed on for chat, and I was number four when it began. And somehow or other, uh, my contribution tonight has to do with communication, and I'd be glad to be recognized. I don't see you on my chat, John, so. Um, well, I didn't write any letters. I just put my name on as, as a chat. I didn't write any notes. I, didn't even see, I don't even see that, John. Well, I don't know what to tell you. Okay, what would you like to say, John? Well, listen, communication is the answer to all, almost all of the issues that we're, um, we're witnessing that she's losing a lot of heat. the protocols for speaking at this particular i'm sorry i won't hear you but i literally yeah, hold cannot on. hear you yeah, hold over on. other people on. talking hold on john John, 
John, go ahead. John. Okay, the website that I have brought up to you a number of times is a wash with errors, omissions, mistakes. It's a mess. Say that again. I didn't. I, I said the, the website, the oh, Arlington website. Housing Authority website, is a mess. M E S S. It has omissions. It has a bundle of errors, and it's it needs to be taken care of. That thing, we have the contact list is completely out of date. You still have Anita Bottolino on there, and she's been gone for months. Mr. Metropolis, who is apparently our chairman of the board, is still listed as vice chairman. The, the, the bio for uh, Ms. Preston does not have any communications information. Ms. Badia, who was appointed six weeks ago, doesn't even appear. That's on that's on. It just doesn't make any sense to me at all why that kind of nonsense happens. And there's no excuse for it. None. And if we can't deal with this appropriately, it is clearly an issue that's got to go to either HUD or it has to go to the attorney general's office and the governor's office about the inability of this organization to get its act together with that website. I'd be, I'd be glad to hear from anybody regarding that. Go ahead, John. No, John, uh, you know, the, the website does need updating. Uh, it, we don't have webmasters here or update people. Or, you know, I do it. If you notice well, things are doing a poor job, Mr. Griffin, and you've well, got to find you. an answer to it. This is unacceptable. Thank you, Mr. Ward. Okay, we'll take a look at it. Uh, when Carol, when are you going to take a look at it? I'm sorry. If I can say something. Last I checked, when we were talking about the budget, we mentioned that there was a payment for a website update that I thought was to update the website. Um, so again, I guess I'm going back to the budget on that. If if the person that we're paying to do the website updates isn't doing the website updates, then what exactly is that website budget going to? No, it's, it's if, not a website. I, say, I actually oh, use the website a lot. And well, this is Marianne from Hauser Building. The thing is, and I, I mean, I agree, there are some things that are out of date for sure. But the critical piece that I find is that it's always updated in, in the important ways, like when the meetings are happening, you can download the budget. And so I understand there's frustration with the parts that aren't up to date, but the critical pieces are up to date. But I, right, I hear they should they all be up to date. There shouldn't be just critical. Yeah, I just to point that out. That's all. It. Yep. It lit, it, the, On that. The, Wins, the Winslow Tenants Association detail has been out of whack for 10 years now. It lists Brenda Cox as the president which is not true at all there's nobody that can go to that website and get reliable information the detail for this particular meeting didn't appear until last night um, john ward just want to uh address that as far as far as the tenants associations um in, in like the website and fiorella's profiles are up there um Fiorella will have to provide us a profile. Listen, you're giving us an excuse again, John. And if that's what you got the race for, you got to do better than that. John Ward, I'll take we'll take a look at it. Okay. We'll, well that's it. what you said about the, the the problem with the air conditioners, and you never got back to me, Mr. Metropolis. Metropolis, yeah. Okay. Um, take it under I don't pay. I, I, just, Mr. Ward. I, I think as far as we in dealing with the updates to the tenants association um, on the website, uh, if the t tenant presidents can each look at, at their building that's on the website and send the information that they want, uh, this is for their use. So if if they if the tenants association um, can take a look at it and update the presidents, the things, the activities that they. Well, not so You're much. Putting now. the blame on somebody else again, Mr. Griffin. On John, okay, we get we get your point, John. We understand. Well, when okay, are we, we going to do something about it? 
you have anything else to say, we, I, we understand your point. Okay. Yeah, well, when are we going to do something about that? All right. I told you I would look into it and I will figure it out. When will you look into it? When do you want me to call you, John? Give me your you phone. You can number. call me after you finish this meeting if you'd like. Well, give me your phone number, John. John has got phone it. Number. Give me Mr. your phone Griffin number. Has it. I'm right. not going to I'm going not going to publish it across this format. Right. I will tell you mine and you can call me 617 617-699-2742. Nick Metropolis. Okay. Right. Is, call me when you'd like, anytime. Go yeah. ahead. Go ahead, uh, ahead Joanne. Um, you know, not everybody can do everything. I could never update a website. So I'm just wondering about this consultant. Is that something they could be working more often on? it really is important to have a, a website. And uh, it seems like John Griffin's older work with roofs and stuff like that. I don't know, what do you think, John? I, as far as the website, it has really nothing to do with the webmaster or anything like that. It has more with our internal organization as far as getting the, the data to the webmaster. Uh, each department head should probably take a look at their, uh, their programs that are on the website and make sure they're updated properly. I'll, and, I'll, and I'll make sure that happens. Um, as far as the tenants association pages, um, they, they should take a look at it and look at the activities, the tenant presidents, and um, at the tenant meeting, they, if they update that to us, uh, we can forward that to the webmaster. We don't even have to wait to the, if they can look at that their pages that they use uh, for activities or anything like that, uh, and in the email addresses, if they want to add that to it, that's fine too. Um, and all of the staff. Okay, we, we, staff we understand. We'll take we'll take it offline and we'll we'll figure it out. So, good recommendation, Joanne. Anybody else have anything to say? Yeah. Yeah. Good to go. We're going to move on to the agenda. Thanks. Um, uh, on project updates. Project updates. Okay, we have quite a bit going on. We have. Um, You'll see later on, we have a couple of projects that, uh, that went out to bid, we accept it. we're gonna have to accept some bids on them. Um, the Cusack elevator is complete. We are working on um, the roof over Cusack Terrace uh, design. You'll see as we go down here, Father, in, in the agenda that we're going to be uh, applying, we'd like to be able to apply to DHCD for a sustainability grant uh, we've already talked to uh, the architects and engineers at DHCD. Uh, we have a roof that's going on Cusack Terrace. It's about uh, $400,000, $450,000. And the roof that they want to put on is an additional uh, $55,000. And, uh, and speaking with uh, John Olson, the architect from DHCD, and Greg Abbey, the person in charge of sustainability, is that they said they would approve a grant uh, to the housing authority. Uh, but we have to do a couple things first. We have to, um, one, take a board vote, and two, apply for the sustainability grant, about $55,000. They said they will already already approve it. Uh, we just need the board vote uh, to move forward with that. So that'll, that'll be done later on in, on the agenda. Um, I did like, I think I think there's someone else that's talking. Else that talking. Yeah. Can you, can you mute all those callers? If you're, not, if you're not speaking, can you mute yourself, please? If you're not speaking, who's CO? Call a five one and three. Call a five. Yeah, thank you. Anybody else? There's a couple more. Go ahead. Who was speaking? John, he was speaking. Uh, what was they saying? <laughs> Talking about project updates. Okay, project. Okay, the project updates. Um, uh, the bath, the bathroom bids will probably be going out uh, at the end uh, end of February for all uh, handicap accessible bathrooms in in uh, a brand new bathroom at Chestnut Manor and a brand new bathroom at Winslow Towers. Uh, the Bathrooms up at the housing building will have um, 
automatic door opens and is put put on them. And the same with Cusack Terrace. Um, and as you as you go as we go through the agenda, there's a couple other projects uh, that we're going to be looking to do. And one is um, we're uh, doing inspections. We're going to have to replace the fire pump system. We had that rebuilt here uh, probably about three years ago. It is uh, failing. It hasn't failed yet. Uh, but we're going to be asking later on in the agenda to approve $150,000 uh, for a bin, uh, a new water pump system and all new hoses on the floors at the Winslow Towers property. Uh, also uh, doing it, we're going to look for, be looking for uh, doing the fire inspection uh, up at the Hauser building. Uh, they, they feel that that system needs to be updated and uh, per the fire department, they would like us up to, to update it. We would like to update it. So uh, we need to apply uh, or use formula funding. So I need a board vote to use uh, $450,000 for a new uh, fire alarm system up at the Hauser building at Drake Village. So um, the, the balconies over at Chestnut Manor um, will we'll be out to bid um, this month, uh, later on in the month. So uh, the resurfacing of that will be done. Um, probably as soon as the spring start. Uh, the big projects that we have going on here, they're mo getting ready to mobilize uh, for Windsor Towers, the window project. Um, that's a two and a half million dollar project that we're uh, going to be starting on uh, in March. Um, and there was, there was there's one other project I was just going to mention. I just lost my thoughts. So I'll think of it in a minute. Okay. Anything else, John? That'll be it. Okay. Um, item one, FSS grant, 72000 Yes, I just want to let you know, this is a, a family self-sufficiency grant uh, received from the um, from Housing and Urban Development from HUD. Uh, and this is for uh, the self-sufficiency program that we use in the, in the Section 8 program that we have. We have 422 Section 8 vouchers. Uh, probably about 30 people at a time uh, have signed up and registered for the FSS program. They work with a counselor here that we have. Uh, they do uh, work out problems as far as training, education, schooling. Uh, and it's a fantastic program where if the income goes up while they're in the program, um, they get to actually, the, the amount that it goes up uh, gets put into a bank account separately from them. So they, if they pay a higher thing, they end up getting all that money back. We've had people over the last last few years walk uh, leave the program with you know twenty twenty five thousand dollars in the in their in their pocket from the FSS program. Fantastic program, uh, and we got funding to continue it for another year. So great. Do we need to vote on it or anything? Nope, not on that. Okay, cool, great, thanks. Uh, COVID vaccine update. I know you gave us a brief one, but you wanna. Yeah, no, I, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, Christine Bongiorno's uh, waiting anxiously uh, for the Department of Public Health from the state. Uh, as soon as those vaccines, uh, as soon as the state decides to move forward phase two, uh, whenever that is, I believe that's supposed to be the, uh, somewhere in the beginning of February is uh, when phase two is supposed to begin. But right off the bat, we're going to be uh, prioritized and um and as soon as we know anything we'll let everyone else know too so but she's wor she's working on it uh she's got a pl good plan in place so uh something we all can't wait for so hey john there's a question are they going to be done down at monotony manor also um we have not had that conversation as far as um i don't know at, at this time no um it's the elderly and dis the disabled uh, and the and the people over 65 that they're prioritizing. But uh, when they said public housing residents right now, I believe it's just the uh, the elderly. I'll, I'll clarify that with Christine, but. Can you clarify that, Christine? Just a couple of questions that came through. Okay, go ahead, Joanne. I believe, uh, as you know, um, before I came on the board, I delivered masks, face masks that 
friends made down to Monotomy Manor. And I think there are some people, maybe just a handful, who would be considered senior citizens and grandmothers or people who's um, uh, people who um, who are waiting there to be transferred after COVID. But I'm just wondering, John, how many people do you think are eligible, either 60 or over? Down, uh, down at um, Monotomy Manor. I can't tell you right now. Um, I, I know there's uh, probably about at least 14, I believe, uh, single people that are uh, close, closing, getting up to the age of close to 60, but I'm not sure how many off the top of my head. But I, we can pull those numbers up in a, in, as soon as I log on to the computer. Is it 60 or 65? Is it 60 or 65? Is it 60 or 65 in phase two? 65. Yeah, 65 in phase two. Yeah. yeah. Or the condominiums that you have. Do you have any? I don't want anyone to be left out. Condominiums will be included in, in, in what the elderly building. They are considered elderly units, so. Oh, okay. Cool. Okay. Um, cool. Okay, that's the update. Any questions for John? So you'll follow up on the manor, right, John? Yep. With uh, Christine. Okay, cool. Um, item three is the uh, approval of low bidder and award of a contract of home contracting for Drake Village exterior project. Yes. Um, okay, this, this is the, uh, the the cottages up at Drake Village, the nine buildings that we have. Um, and as you, if you remember, we were actually, we applied for a grant from the CPA committee, the Community Preservation Committee. Um, and I'm going to make, I'm going to be making my final presentation at the end of February when they have their meeting. Um, and we're, we're going to be looking for $381,000. That was our initial request based on uh, the um, the amount to uh, the cost estimates that uh, the engineers came up with uh, to do it. Do the first two um, pieces of the, of the project up there. As you know, the cottages of Drake Village, we have nine units and we broke, because of the lack of funding that we had for it, we broke them into eight different components. So we can do uh, components one and components two, and and those are uh, that's those components on those buildings are um, the fascias and soffits of all the all the buildings, um, the painting uh, on, on all the fascias and soffits, and the paintings uh, of all the um, steel and uh, metal that's up there. So that's in, that's the two parties that we picked in phase. Uh, in one and two. And when we were doing that, we were gonna be $381,000 shot. Fortunately, um, the project came in under budget, under what we thought. Uh, it came in for, uh, with alternates. So when we put this out to bid, we put it out to bid for four cottages, because that's all we had the funding from DHCD. Complete components one and two in four separate cottages. The CPA money was gonna be used to do the additional five buildings. And since the bids came in, um, for the first four cottages was $203,000. And the alternates one through five came in at $41,000 each for a total of 408,000. So it's uh, quite a bit underneath. We're still gonna make our presentation to the CPA committee. Um, we may, if for parts one and two, um, the dilemma, and this is a, this is something I want to say with the CPA with the CPA committee. Now we have this project; it's out to bid for this portion of it, and the CPA funds. If they were, we're awarded CPA money, um, we can't access that money till July first, uh, two thousand twenty-one, which is basically really the fiscal year twenty twenty-two. Um, so this, this project is going out the bid. If we had to take a hundred thousand dollars from reserves, just to meet the number that we have now, we can do that, or we can 
um, talk to the CPA committee and uh, still re request that funding for the additional components um, that we didn't get done. Uh, components uh, three, three to six, and that includes uh, the door, the entryways in the buildings up at Three Lake Village Cottages. So um, we're doing that. Uh, we're going to do that anyways. But tonight I'm going to ask you uh, for approval. This went out to bid. The low bid came in uh, for Homer Con Contracting Inc. for the Jake Village Exterior Project. Uh, it's DHD fish number 010096. Uh, we need to uh, accept the low bid amount of $203,000. And then after that, we're going to accept uh, alternates one through five at $41,000 each for the uh, for a total contract award of four hundred and eight thousand dollars. So I have a motion. Okay. Question. I'll make a motion uh, that we. Do you want me to read the whole thing? Hey, Brian, John. So I make a motion that we approve a uh, low bid award contract for home of contracting the Drake Village Exterior Project DHCD fish uh, number zero one zero zero nine. Curious about that. Yeah, in the amount. Oh, did I lose you, John? No, good. Oh, sorry. I thought Mike. Uh, in the amount of $203,000 in $200,000 in acceptance of alternates one through five at $41,000 each for a total contract award of $408,000. Do I have a second? All right, I actually had a question. Gar had a question, and I was yeah, just sorry, curious. I, had a question. I do you. have a question. So in the backup packet, it, it, the, the uh, alternate number five is only $40,000. I think it's a typo, but I just want the numbers to add up. It should be $41,000 each. It, it's the one through four are 41000 and number five is 40000 So it's $1,000 off. And... Um, but I would, uh, I guess, second it as amended. <laughs> okay. Fiorella, do you have something to say? I do not. Okay, I thought you were. Okay. Uh, so we have a second. Um, All in favor? Brian? Yes. Gar? Yes. Joanne? Yes. Yes. And next, yes. Item four, John, the approval of amended capital plan for emergency funding from formula funding in the amount of 150K. As I mentioned, this is for the fire pump system here at, uh, Win at Winslow Towers. It's the system that pumps the water up uh, to the sprinkler system in the fire hoses on each floor. So um, we need approval for amended capital plan, emergency funding for formula funding in amounts of $150,000 for DHCD fish 010101 for the fire pump replacement at Winslow Towers 6673. Do I have a motion? I have a question. Go ahead. Go ahead, Gar. So John, you mentioned, didn't we do this like three years ago? Yeah, we had we had the pump that was there rebuilt. Okay. They didn't, they didn't replace it at that time. But now what's going on is they put a new generator in since that time, and the water pressure from the street uh, is the problem. Um, they need to be able to draw more pressure from the main uh, from from outside, and that's what this pump uh, is going to have to do. And so I guess my question is the one we did three years ago it has no sort of warranty with it or anything like that. Oh, that's, no, no. Okay. Fiorella. Um, I actually looked up like fire pump replacement and such. I obviously don't know what it entails with the building, but it did say around twelve hundred to replace a fire pump, and then for the sprinkler system, it should be around twenty thousand dollars. Um, I know it says four hundred and fifty thousand dollars, so I just was wondering what that it includes. No, th this one's the this is the hundred and fifty thousand dollar one. This is item number four on the agenda. Yeah. 
$150,000. Oh. All right. Well, either way, it's a $1,200 fire, fire replacement along with $20,000 for the sprinklers. No, no. The, 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 the pump that we use, I don't know where um, that has been. This building here, it's a 14-story high-rise building with a whole um, fire pump room that we had built a few years ago. Gotcha. Um, I think the I think the room cost over one hundred and fifty thousand dollars to build, uh, and then the, the equipment in it is is huge. You see giant pumps, and um, next time you're at Windsor, we'll show you. But it's uh it's not a twelve thousand or twelve hundred dollar pump. It's okay. Uh, I thought it was like a fire big, pump. That's it, kind of thing. All right, I didn't know. Cool. Uh, it's a you big, put it out the, you put it out the bid. You put it out the bid, John. Right under state requirements and stuff. Right. Yeah, this is this will will be going out to bid. It has to go yeah. out to bid. The architects and engineers at DHC, the ones uh, Frank Bossy, the head engineer, uh, is actually the one that um, did the initial work, and now it's going out to a, an engineering company as part of it, and they're going to design it and, and have it rebuilt. You know, have it a new one installed. So it, it's okay. an it's a big project and an expensive project, and it, and it's probably. It's it's a very worthwhile project, uh, and this is all due to a field uh, fire inspection uh, test on the system, and and that also this all one hundred fifty thousand dollars also includes on on each floor at Windsor Towers they have uh, fire hoses that um, will be be able to be activated if you know even if the fire department usually when the fire department comes here they will carry their own hoses. Uh, in they'll carry them up 14 stories if they have to, but uh, on the other end there are fire hoses that are here now that have been uh, updated at some point, uh, and they all need to be updated again. They're the big, the big hoses that put all the water in. So. Cool. Go, go, go. Do I have a motion? Do I have a motion? Yes. Go, go. I think John wants yes. to say something. Yeah, I, I think the other thing we should understand too, and I, I know what Fiorello is referring to because I look at some things once in a while and say, wow, that's pretty cheap. How come we pay for it so much, pay so much in the public sector? There's something called prevailing wage rates, and we have to pay prevailing wage rates in these jobs, which is not necessarily what we can go to the any contractor and say, uh, what can you do this for? The contractors have to pay various prevailing wage rates, and some of the jobs uh, also require an architect and engineer on them by statute. So that you need maybe more architectural engineering work just by by requirements uh, of the statutes, and also you need uh, all, again all depending on the cost, the minimal threshold, and also you have to pay prevailing wage rates, which can make a big difference depending on, on the particular position. So I know it seems it seems funny, but when you factor those things in, those of us in the public sector have learned to expect that. Mm. Yeah. Anybody else? Any other questions? Comments? Okay. Uh, do I have a motion? I'd make, make a motion to approve the amended capital plan for emergency funding from formula funding for the amount of 150000 for DHCD fish number 010101 for the fire pump replacement at Winslow Towers 667 3. Go ahead a second. I'll second that. Second. Second by Brian. Uh, all in favor? Carr? Yes. Brian? Joanne? Yes. Fiorella? Yes. And Nick is yes. It's unanimous. Item five, approval of amended capital plan for emergency funding from formula funding in the amount of 450K of the fire alarm system at Hauser Building. John, any, any, any discussion, John, around that? This here is, uh, again, uh, due to uh, inspection with the fire system and a recommendation from the Allenton Fire Department that we replace the system. And uh, when, we, when we talked to him about it, uh, you know, we, com we committed that, you know, we will get this done. I just need approval from the board to do it. But uh, this is something that, that they very strongly uh, re requested and, and would like to require us to uh, complete this. And, and it's a it's a very worthwhile project. It does uh, mean that they will be going into the, each each apartment, uh, adding new uh, 
alarm heads in, in each in each unit uh, and in the hallways. So it, it's a fairly good sized project. We did it over at Chestnut Manor last year, uh, and we 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 were very fortunate. We got a great company that uh, did nice work. They did a nice clean job. So, but it it, it is a uh, a big job. Hey John, who requires? Any yeah, I have a question. Who, okay. who recommends we do it? Is it the fire department? Uh, the Arlington Fire Department. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Any discussion? Good to go. Uh, do I have a motion? Joanne, Joanne's looking to talk. Oh, sorry. So, go ahead, just Joanne. To again, um, this is for energy efficient efficiency, and I. Uh, uh, it's fine with this grant, but would this be a possibility for Mononity Manor to fix the windows and the cracks around the doors? And it seems like they have to pay their own heat. And it seems like, and we want to be energy efficient in general. Is this a possible in the years next year or something to apply for something for the Mononymy Manor? leaky windows and doors or is it not are we on uh, number five yeah this this, this is I, th I think it's a separate question joanne do can we apply for windows and doors at Menani manor uh yes we can we can do it we can do it and i think one of the ways to do it is when we do our capital plan in this uh in late in spring early summer that we put a request in for to do a, a study of the windows, uh, and that will that will get the ball uh, moving. Uh, we hire a company to come out, and they they look at the windows. They go in, they take it, they do asbestos uh, studies on it to find out if, if there's asbestos on the windows or uh, on the sails of the windows. Sometimes, uh, but we would do it through the capital planning system. Do the study, come up with cost estimates. Then we'll be able to uh, apply for different grants for that but this this one here number five uh, has nothing to do with the energy efficiency or anything this is just a you know, uh, security and safety issue uh that was yeah. um, that came up okay thank you okay any, any so other discussion I'll make a motion. Okay, John. Go ahead, Brian. i'll make a motion to approve number five which consists of uh, approval of amended capital for emergency funding from formula funding in the amount of four hundred and fifty thousand dollars for DHCD fish zero one zero one zero one for the fire alarm system at the Hauser building sixty six six seven dash four. Do I have a second? Yeah, I will second it. Uh, second. <clears throat> All in favor? Crying. Yes. Car. Yes. Joanne. Yes. Fiorella. Yes. Nick is yes. Unanimous. Okay. Uh, item six. Approval of submission of sustainability grant from DHCD for an energy efficient roof material for CUSAC Terrace roof replacement. John, anything on this? Yep. The, the, as I said, the roof over at uh, CUSAC Terrace is going to be about four hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Also. Uh, to replace the black roof that they were going to put on with the uh, rubber and the gravel. Uh, they suggested a white energy efficiency roof. Uh, they, su they suggested that we apply for the sustainability grant, which they said they would grant us, uh, but we have to apply and we have to get an energy audit done over at Cusack Terrace. And, and, oh, go ahead. Uh, Peter, go. No, go ahead. Uh, for the sustainability grant, just a question. I know that that would be for the roof over there. I'm assuming that includes labor too, not just the material for it. Okay. Labor and materials. Yep. Okay. And for the grant, I know it is separate for the roof, but um, it's not something that has to be like, like it's not a grant that we receive at this Arlington Housing Authority rather than just the one, like just CUSAC. Do you know what I mean? So we're getting the grant. Does that mean that we have to like divide it within all the housing authorities or just just for that right now specifically yeah this was this the grant would be specifically for this project just the for cusack okay. so it's a, 
the group that they came up with the cost estimate of an additional $55,000. And uh, Greg Abbey from uh, DHCD has, has talked to John Olson and said, if we apply for it, he will approve it. Uh, I think they really want us to apply for it, actually. Um, apply for it, but uh, it's just that the timing it just means when we do it, we're going to have to do an energy audit on, on a CUSAC terrace. So um, it's just a little bit of uh, extra work and extra time, but uh, well worth it. And it's if they're offering us $55,000, something uh, better, uh, you know, I think it's a it's a good move. And they, they, they want to, any project that we do, they want us to uh, look at the sustainability and energy efficiency on everything. So. I, I would move to approve this, the, uh, the to submit a sustainability grant from DHCD for an energy efficient roof material for CUSAC Terrace roof replacement. I'll second that. Okay, Brian. Um, all in favor? Gar yes. Brian? Yes. Joanne? Yes. And Fiorella? Yes. Thank you. That's naked, yes. Okay. Um, item seven, approval of the minutes of December 16, 2020. I just, I don't, I don't know if you, it's up to, up to you what you want to do. I noticed tonight earlier that uh, they weren't included in your board package. Is that accurate? Yeah, that's okay. correct. And, and I emailed them to everyone before that. So I don't know if you've read them or not or. Um, I actually do have a question about it. Um, who does the minutes? Because they are very out of context. Every comment seems to be. Uh, Sandy Melanson, uh, one of our people here, does it. And, you know, generally, you know, half the, half the conversation, she tries to get everything she can possibly get uh, uh -huh. during, during, the, during the meeting. And, uh, you know, all the, all depends if you if you see something that's out of context you can amend it um you have the ability to uh change something in the minutes that you don't agree with or anything like that feel free to do that and, and then the board will just say you'd approve it as amended so okay so I, I mean where it. we are being uh videotaped i believe right and audio recorded as well could the minutes i mean could it not be printed out and written from that I don't know if it can be printed out. Uh, we do record the meetings for that meeting per, for that purposely. If you if you, if you think she should go back and take and look at that uh, video and go minute, I don't know how you want to do it. Uh, but it's the context. Yeah, we had a, we had a conversation. Actually, someone I think it was a woman by the name of Elizabeth something had emailed me uh, looking for the uh, video recordings of prior, prior meetings. And when we first started doing this, I mean, our, our general conversation was, uh, we're gonna have, we're gonna record for the purpose of doing, using them to um, check back on the minutes to make sure you had accurate minutes. Uh, we're, after speaking with John Greco and everything uh, regarding this is, um, the if we have video recordings, uh, they are public records, so, uh, any if i have any of the previous meetings uh i will be putting the whole meeting video uh on on our website so people would be able to see uh the second part i know later on down we have a request from acmi video uh to record Arlington housing Authority board meetings which i think is a great idea um and, and also uh they're entitled to uh, be able to record our meetings uh, people can record our meetings, so. Um, hey, hey, John, to, should we recommend? Should we recommend to uh, postpone this approval to next month? Table, I, table I, move, yeah. I move to table it till next month. Um, yeah. I like all the detail, but for instance, I don't think Fiorella owns a van, so <laughs> it's one thing. There are just a little mistakes, and I haven't had a chance to go through it. Is it possible? Yeah, I agree. Can I make? A the table. Yep. Until next meeting. Second. Do we have a second? Yeah, I'll second that. Okay, Gar. All in favor? Joanne? Yes. Gar. 
Yes. Fiorella? Yes. Brian? Yes. And Nick is a yes. Thanks. Um, item eight, request from ACMI to veto AHA board meetings. Can we all agree it's their right to do that? I don't think we need a vote, right, John Greco? Right, John Greco? Yeah, hang on. Yes, that is correct. Yeah, the only thing is it's like any other meeting. They can't interfere, uh, whether it's a, a meeting in person or a virtual meeting. Whatever it has to be done, they can't interfere with the uh, the uh, operation of the meeting. And as long as that's the case, they have the right to do so. Great. Thank you, John. Hey, John, I have one other. I have someone, one of the public, or one of the tenants wants to speak again. Can I do that? Should I do that? Yeah. Are we okay with that? Yeah, you have, it's not you have the right to do that. If you feel that everybody, I think if you feel everybody's spoken and there's still time in the meeting, you certainly can recognize someone a second time. Okay, thank you, John. Go ahead, John. John, you're on mute, John, if you want to speak. You're on He's mute. Muted. Yeah. There you go, John. I uh, want to comment uh, with regard to the printed minutes for uh, um, an organization like the Arlington Housing Authority, you are not obliged to uh, take word for word anything from the public. You are required to put a topical subject matter without editing as to what the, the, the party has included. That's just for your uh, the person who is doing your, your work, which is uh, you know, obviously with this pro this format, it has gotten to be uh, highly increased. You don't have to, you, once again, you do not have to take the conversations and re and put them word for word. All you need to do is incorporate the, the subject matter and the, par the party, party bringing it up. If the person is interested, they can do what you just said. They can go to the website and and go to the point in the uh, conversation that you, of your meeting and get the information for themselves. Thank you. Thanks. That's, a, that's a correct interpretation. Um, but documents you have that are available, you have to make to the pub, make available to the public. But the minutes do not have to be word for word. John Ward is right on that. Thank you, John. John. Anybody else? Um, I don't know who that is. You raise your hand. I can't see your name in the blue sweater. Elizabeth, Elizabeth, go ahead. Sorry. You're on Thank mute, you. Elizabeth. Thank there you go. very much. Um, so I'm the one that, that was emailing you trying to get the minutes to the previous meetings and the videos. Okay. And I'm just wondering if you can help me understand where to find them. So the minutes for, um, I believe I said, um, I know December we just got tabled. So maybe November and October aren't on the website? No, they are on the website. Where I looked. Okay, I'll look again. Thank you. Sorry about that. And then, okay. is there access to the videos of the previous meetings? I am going to try and see what I have. I get an e after after this meeting ends. I usually get an email saying your video has been recorded. Um, and then what I usually do is if after the, they do the minutes, I delete that email. But um, what I'm discovering is go to meeting. Uh, has a history that I think I can access, and what I'll do is if I if I have any minutes I have, uh, video minutes I have, or video of the meeting, I will uh, put on the website so people can access that. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Um, the next item is adjourn. <laughs> uh, one thing before we adjourn go ahead go ahead brian um and i know we didn't get it on the agenda to talk about this liaison thing that i was proposing uh however this week i spoke with john greco and he uh, went over what he did in medford when he was the executive director in medford uh which i thought was a pretty good idea so instead of you know theoretically assigning one board member to each development that what he did with his board members over there is they each took a development each month. So they kind of rotated through the places. And what they did is they went in and did a, a cursory inspection. So for instance, you know, if you went up to, to Drake Village, for instance, I mean, you'd walk the property, uh, you wouldn't go into individual apartments, but 
but you check the property, the exterior, the interior, the hallways and so forth to see if there's any, any issues. You'd meet with the tenant president to see if they have any issues uh, and then you'll report back to the next meeting. So, uh, so I'll work with John on, on some type of a, a document to propose to the board for next meeting and we could probably talk more on this. Sounds good. Thanks, Brian. Um, cool. I'd like to speak. Okay, John. Um, I've also been working, as you know, on communication. And part right. one has to do very much with what Brian's talking about, um, but of a slightly different perspective by strengthening tenants associations. So um, they certainly should be discussed together, either before the meeting or certainly at the meeting. Okay. Yeah, I think that yes. So uh, Joanne and, and everybody. So when I come up with a draft, uh, I'll flip it out to everybody, and we could probably uh, work on it and, and get something perfected for the next meeting. And Joanne, you can yeah, if, if you if you have yours done, if you could circulate that also, would be great. So I did I did have one other thing. Fear Fear Ellen and I was starting to talk about a tenants association down at Monotomy Manor. John Correcto, Fiorella, if you. And a couple questions of how we go about doing that. Is that correct, Fiorella? Please jump in if you if you want to. Um, John you Greco, said. what? Go ahead, Fiorella. Go ahead. No, I'm sorry. What did you say? I, I couldn't understand what you said. Oh, here, we were talking about starting a tenants association down in Monotomy right. Manor, mm -hmm. and you had some questions about how we go about doing that, right? Is that um no no i i was just asking for some bullet points to include in a letter to deliver okay. to each tenant about what a tenants association is and how they can get involved and such okay cool so john greco do we have anything like that that we can set, send a fiorella or yeah, any recommendation what, yes what we can do we can show there's a, a set of tenant uh, uh, tenant association regulations uh, that DHCD publishes, we can send those to Fiorella, and uh, that might give her a start. Additionally, I think the thing is that it's sometimes difficult to understand. There's a fine line in between assisting and controlling. So you've got to be careful that you assist the residents in, in getting a tenants uh, organization, a tenants association started, but you can't start controlling that organization. So, you know, the tendency is to get down the road to go either too far or not far enough. So you have to be careful with that. So that's uh, that's kind of a a difficult thing to do. It's it's the gradations and nuances of things. So, but that we can help you with certainly as well too. Uh, we don't always know how far that is sometimes because once you get running down the road, you might tend to go too far or stop too early. But nevertheless, uh, that's one of the things you have to be careful for. But by the same token, the tenant uh, DHCD tenant regulations are probably a good place to start and then work from there. Perfect. So John, Fiorella, will you take will you take a crack at that? first letter is that what you need or are you all set with anything else from us yeah i mean if i get those regulations and all that information on how to assist i think that'll be perfect and if, and if you want and if you want fiorella we'll look at the the uh, letter you have if you want some assistance with bullet points or suggestions we'll be glad to do that as well thank you great so john john greco can you send the regulations to fiorella yes i will uh, if you want to okay. give me your email, Fiorella, or give it to John Griffin, he'll right. give it to me. I have it. I have it. I'll send it to you, John. We have it. Okay. We have it, John. Yeah. Is that what you need, Fiorella? Good. Thank you. John and John, are those regulations from DHCD about tenants associations? Is it in regular people's language, or do you need a law degree? Do you think? No, I think it's. I think it's generally. It's like any regulation. Uh, they seem like they, uh, you know, uh, contradict each other until you read the the regulation four lines down. But generally, they're they're relatively un easy to understand. Okay. Cool. Just um, a lot of the regulations you can find regarding tenants associations, regarding um, tenant participation in public housing. It's uh, seven CMR seven sixty dot six. Uh, if you those those are the regulations. If you do Commonwealth of Mass or just type in CMR seven sixty point six. Uh, all the tenant regulations, uh, it's pretty interesting read, so. Perfect, thank you. Great, welcome. Thank you. Um, go ahead, Joanne. Joanne, go ahead. Joanne. 
me? No. Um, Were you raising your hand? Yeah. That one way to have an election. Can you hear me? Yep. Can you hear me? Okay. Is yes. to have what's called an election committee. And uh, that maybe that's something that Mr. Greco was referring to. But that's so that someone on the board isn't doing it because you have a committee and they work collectively to do it. But also one of the things would be when it's okay with COVID is to allow that in the building, the building is to have space, at least just for something where um, the Tenants Association organizing could be come out of. Uh, that's one of the ways that the board and the director can facilitate giving it space, also Xerox and so forth. Also say a telephone. Everybody. I, I only caught part of that at the end. Uh, I didn't get the end. But he has cell phone. Can you, can you repeat that if you can? Or? Yeah, it seems like so, our internet's down. So important. So important. Sorry, I lost. I lost audio. I lost. Uh, I lost my internet. So. Can you hear me, John? I can hear you. Okay, cool. But I didn't hear Joanne. I could barely hear Joanne. Yeah. Yeah, I think this go to meeting is having a little uh, seizure. I keep on losing. Oh, I'm sorry. Cameras. There's something breaking up. I think the number of people. Yeah, that it's beginning to break up. Maybe we ought to just wait till the next meeting. <laughs> All right. Um, so I have a motion to adjourn. So moved. John has a question. But, oh, John. John. Griffin, you have I a question? No, I don't have a question. I just want to say um, we're going to uh, tonight's meeting was, wasn't too, too bad, uh, but we are going to look at the, uh, the Zoom platform to see if the meetings would work better on those and, uh, or not. Um, I know my wife uses it for mediation in the courts, and it's pretty amazing some of the things it can do where they break them out into different rooms and all that. I don't think we need to be that complicated. Um, but I think we're going to look at the Zoom platform, and if we can, I can figure it out even for the next meeting. Um, we we may try that uh, that form the platform and see if that works better. So I'll, I'll try and let you know. But either way, it'll probably it'll be the same way to access. It'll be a click from um, from the website. So just a click on the link. So yeah. I I've used Zoom all the last year and a half, John. Go ahead, Fiorella, real quick. I'm um, just like last thing. I remember Gar mentioned something about maybe uh, changing the name from Monotomy Manor. Um, just wondering how that would actually work, and yeah, just how that would go. You got to be kidding me. Changing the name. Yeah. I don't know how would that work. I have no idea. Well, I know well, he we... it might be a little offensive to still have an Indian, like Native American name to oh, it. Come on. <laughs> All right. Wow. Well, and like, Amy Ryan, Kip. I think, uh, I I think that's something that... a investigation can talk <laughs> about. One just something that was one. mentioned in the email, so I just wanted to discuss it. Mm -hmm. I don't know how that would work, John. Who has, who has naming rights? I have no clue. I guess figure it figure it out. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you. I have no clue. I, have I, no I clue. think on that, I mean, I'll I'll look into that. What a naming change would be. Um, I mean, it, it's kind of interesting because for years people referred to it as the projects, you know, and we mm -hmm. spent a very a lot of time, a lot of effort to use the name Anonymous Manor and refer to it as Anonymous mm -hmm. Manor. So it wouldn't have the stigma of, you know, 
feeling or or people saying, "Oh, the projects." It, it, even today, when I you know you pick up or you look on the internet every once in a while, you can kind of tell who's old Arlington and who's not old Arlington by the way they refer to uh, Menominee Manor. Um, right. And I, I think we've worked hard trying to call it Menominee Manor, so it would lose the the stigma of you know. The Arlington projects right. or the, uh, some of the I mean, I don't think that has really changed. I think it's still called the projects no matter what. Also, to whoever just made the comment, oh, come on, keep those side comments to yourself. We're all trying to have a conversation here. And the rude, demeaning side commentary from the peanut gallery is not really appreciated for me personally. I was making a genuine question. Yep. No, that's fair. That's, that's a fair comment. I just don't I just don't know who has a naming right to. No, no, yeah, that, again, that, I was just asking, but that's, yeah. Is that a state, is that a state issue? Or is that, I no, no I, I think we, I think we should be able to have the naming rights to it. Oh, okay. uh, all right. We, we can call it whatever we want. <laughs> well, maybe the tenant association or. Maybe the tenant association can come up with a name. Yeah, once we get it associated. Yes, absolutely. After all. Yep. So. Cool. We have a motion on the, uh, we have a motion on the, uh, Table to adjourn. I have a second. 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 All right. All in favor? Uh, yes. Brian. Yes. Go in. Irella. Yes. Car. Yes. Nick is a yes. Thanks, everybody. Who, who made the original day. motion? Who okay. made the original motion? Brian. I Brian. Have a great night, everybody. Have a great weekend. And Fiorella and Rachel Salon will call you in the next couple of days. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Thank you.